expectation. So, may I have then the first uh, speaker, Yael, and the title is noted, but anyhow I will read it. It's self-assembly of biological electrical networks. Yael, please. Okay, so uh, good morning, and uh, I hope I will be surprising the chair, as well as a few other in the audience. I'm not going to talk uh, only about uh, our work on uh, carbon nanotubes and neurons. I'm tired. Okay, thank you. Uh, but I'm going to talk um, actually about two, uh, two projects we do in the lab, one of which is the uh, uh, carbon nanotubes interface uh, for neurons, but the other project has to do with uh, self-organization of carbon nanotubes just for the sake of uh, generating uh, electrical networks. It has very little to do with uh, neurons, but you will see that there's some uh, similarities, and the similarities come from the fact that both systems uh, arrange themselves, and that, that would be the focus of the talk. So we had um, uh, very nice collaborations with a few other groups who are uh, mentioned here, and I'll try <clears throat> during my presentation to highlight the contribution of the different people involved, uh, especially uh, my students, some of which are here, um, and here we go. So um, the starting point is conventional uh, microtechnology or microelectronics, and microelectronics, as some of you may know, some of you may not be too familiar with the topic, is what... Uh, has been developed over uh, the last 50 years to build electronic circuits in a monolithic process. And the key thing here is that the entire process of developing the circuits is um, this process which takes place on one single wafer. Uh, there's a single, uh, typically a silicon wafer uh, on top of which we deposit materials, we etch materials, we uh, uh, drive um, atoms into the system and we generate electrical circuits. Uh, we then cut this wafer, we put it inside these little boxes, we seal them, and these are the chips that we eventually use in all the uh, electronic devices that you know. And um, this fact that you do everything on this one single wafer has been uh, probably one of the keys to the development of this absolutely fantastic technology that pretty much changed our lives. I mean, if you think of all the different technologies uh, this is um, by far uh, one of the most uh, influential. Uh, so it's all about the fact that everything is integrated into one, uh, one continuous process on, on one material, which of course had many, many advantages. However, uh, when you try to think about uh, different applications, not necessarily uh, electronics, you come across the uh, question whether monolithic process is still the ideal uh, most suitable process, and the answer is sometimes no. Sometimes you would like to have other materials and combine them with totally different materials. So, for instance, if you want flexible things, silicon is not the answer. If you want big things, uh, giant displays, silicon is not the answer. If you want uh, a cloth, a smart cloth, um, silicon would not provide the answer. Even if you want uh, optically active uh, components like light emitting diodes, well, some people try to do it from silicon, but traditionally uh, there are better materials to do that. So the approach has been for uh, s these at least three topics, uh, which is MEMS, where you would like to combine mechanical systems, uh, in biology, where you would like to combine uh, biological systems, and in nanoelectronics, that maybe the answer is not to try and combine everything together in one process, but to uh, prepare your uh, little elements from one system, uh, your substrate from another process, and then somehow to bring everything together. Uh, most of the people here are familiar with uh, nanoelectronics and nanowires and nanotubes and why we would like to combine them, but overall uh, this has been a very big issue for uh, many different topics. So, Again, the, the advantage behind this approach is the fact that you have 
the flexibility in choosing your materials. You can choose the best material for your substrate, best material for your application, and then hopefully combine everything together, and then you have all these additional uh, benefits where the applications, uh, again, range from uh, flat panel displays and LED displays and uh, flexible circuits and these sort of things, uh, at least in the uh, micro realm. Okay, so how do you do something like that? You can do the most trivial thing, which is pick and, uh, pick and place, and this is by building very, very fine uh, manipulators, uh, but this is, of course, very, very slow process. Uh, there's another uh, possibility, which is to prepare one substrate with one system, one uh, other substrate with the target system, and then somehow eventually transfer them both. It's another process that people develop. Um, you can make chiplets from one material and then prepare a substrate with holes and then just drive these little chiplets in water and then... Uh, if you plan them in the right uh, pattern, they would actually fall uh, into the right place, pretty much the way eggs sit in an uh, egg tray. Uh, and this actually is a commercial process that has been developed in, uh, at Berkeley and now is commercialized uh, and, and provides um, uh, an actual uh, technology for preparing very, very low-cost electronics in uh, flexible uh, materials. And <coughs> The other uh, possibility is what people uh, refer to as self-assembly. And in self-assembly, the idea is that you have these little uh, elements that has some possibility uh, to recognize each other uh, and in a very, very simple manner. And then uh, these systems basically fall apart. Typically, if you put them in water or in some solution, the whole system just builds itself, sort of like what you have in a uh, biological uh, system. But simply, uh, usually it's very, very simple. It's not uh, hierarchical. It's just a, a one-step assembly. Um, and so in self-assembly, the proper uh, or one possible proper definition is when we uh, refer to a collection of objects that put uh, themselves together. And the advantage is the fact that, uh, again, you, you, you gain simplicity and very, very rapid process of putting many, many elements uh, together. And the challenge typically is how to do that. What would be the force, the driving force that would put uh, these systems together? And traditionally, the approach has been to have some substrate, and over that substrate to have some active binding sites, which could be either uh, a certain chemistry or uh, it could be electrical. Uh, in some cases, it could be magnetic. And then you have a bunch of these little elements, and they just, uh, you just bring them in, and they just fall and sit in the right place, and you have the final uh, result. 